Hey, Knowledge Family, how is everybody doing today? I hope everybody is doing well. Um, I want to talk about a lot of little different things today. I want to start off with, let's talk about a little bit of the speech that they did at the march on um, May 19th. And let's talk about that. And we're just going to talk about a little bit of it. Then I want to get on Joya Elise Bumper with her smart mouth self. Then we're going to talk about these false imprisonment charges that should be on the Cabo 6. Okay, yeah, Cabo 6. I told y'all I was going to be on y'all bumper. I don't know why y'all think I was playing with you, but we're not. Okay, now let's start off with the press conference that they had because it was a lot of things said in there that I want to talk about, but we're going to briefly talk about it, but we will get deep into it family we will get deep into it on may 28th is when we have our live so please join our live it will be may 28th that's on a sunday at 6 p.m central time okay and everybody will get to call in um, if you can get through to the line but we're going to take a lot of calls so I know that live will probably last a, a long time, probably not that long, but we, you know, we're not going to do the thing all night, but we are going to take as many calls as we can. And so we will have the number so that y'all can call in and let's discuss Shanquilla Robertson's case and her justice and the Cowboy Demon Six. Okay. So we will get more deep into this press conference when we do our live show on May 28th. So don't forget, write that down. And also, people, hit the like button. I promise you, it's free. I'm telling you, y'all will be stingy. And I know the people in the bushes be watching. But, you know, if you're going to be in the bushes, at least still hit the like button. You can be in the bushes and hit the like button, too. Ain't nobody going to know. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, just hit the like button. It's free. Boy, y'all stingy with some people are stingy with the like button. They think the like button. It's going to cost them. I promise you that button will not cost you. Okay? No, no, it's not. You know, some people are stingy with their money and stingy in the pocket and all that kind of stuff. I promise you, you hit that like button, it will not take a penny from you. So you don't have to be stingy with the like button. Okay? Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Like, 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 like. I'm going to hold on for a few minutes. Can y'all hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. It's free, I promise you. Thank y'all in the chat. Y'all be rocking in the chat. Y'all be saying some good, knowledgeable things. I'm talking about y'all be rocking the chat. Thank you to the moderators. Y'all do an awesome job with monitoring the chat and everything. Thank you all also for your comments that you leave. Um, awesome comments, you know. Thank y'all for not being disrespectful and everything in the chat or in the comment section. Thank you so much. But y'all already know if somebody get disrespectful in the comment section or the chat that gets deleted, we, we know that that don't even bother us. We just got one button to hit delete and then that's the game. Okay, now let's get on to this press conference. I want y'all to listen to it carefully because they was choosing their words very carefully, I noticed, in this press conference. And it sounds like the United States might let Mexico take over this case um, as Mexico has requested, you know. Um, but just check it out. And they didn't say that this will definitely happen, but they was choosing their words so discreetly till you can almost tell it was a whole nother energy, a positive energy, as if when they went to talk to some people at the White House, that it was a little bit of positive news for them because it seemed like a big positive vibe that was in the air, okay? So they refrained from talking about the ongoing developments of the case that's going on now. So you could tell that they didn't even touch on what's going on with the case or the developments of the case. So you could tell that they was choosing their words very wisely so let's check this out family i want y'all to listen to it and like i said i'm not going to do all of it today but i just want to talk about some of it that was said at the um press conference and the rally 
on May 19th. Check this out. Okay. What happened? And we were praying that we would not have to come here on this day. Six months later, 200 days later, from when Miss Alamandra's baby, Shanquilla, was tragically killed on that video. Shanquilla's, her sister is also present with us. And we were hopeful that the killers... And this is Shanquilla's sister, her older sister, and this is Shanquilla's mother. And that's Mason, everybody, so... Yeah, no, I was glad to see him there. Awesome. Appreciate it, my son. Of Shaquilla Robinson would have already started to face. Would have already started to face. Everyone can hear. We were hoping that this day never had to happen. Six months mark from when Shaquilla Robinson was killed. We were hopeful. That her killers would have already been brought to justice. That they would have already been picked up with the warrant that the Mexican government issued for the unmerciful beating, brutality that saw this young black woman who at the time was naked and not fighting back. And when asked, right, Miss Mallory. Why don't you fight back? She said she's not going to fight back. But yet, her killers continue to brutalize her. We were hoping that that was enough evidence to say you should be arrested and let the wheels of justice start turning because Shaquilla's life matter. Yeah. So yeah, I heard that in North Carolina, we all wondering that. The public wondering that. Everybody's wondering that. Why isn't the Cowboys 6 in jail? Huh? Mm-hmm. Boy, some stink stink over there. Okay, check it out. And then we got the autopsy reports. And we just believed in our heart of hearts that that was enough to bring the killers to be arrested. So... The wheels of justice would start turning, but yet that did not happen. We were hopeful that once the FBI got engaged, that they would respect this American citizen, this young black woman who, based on the video, did absolutely nothing to warrant such a savage beating. No, she did. But yet... She didn't do nothing. Six months later, and everybody who participated in the maiming and brutality of Shaquilla Robinson is still completely free. Mm -hmm. Imagine if this is your child. Yes. Imagine if this is your daughter. Yes. Who you bear, and you brought into this world. to this world just imagine that and nobody is being held accountable for how they killed her and that's North Carolina why isn't the Calvo 6 being held accountable we have asked it so many times what's really going on what's really going on and people let me uh say this too I noticed at this press conference, it was a baby in the background or whatever, and, and, that, and that's fine if that's what you have to do. But sometimes when you have a big press conference like this, you should take the babies away from that microphone so that this can be a professional, a professional press conference, okay? Because you notice when you see other press conference, you don't hear kids in the background hollering and crying and you know things like that and i know that maybe a person couldn't get a babysitter but they wanted to attend the rally and all that but when you're up close to the speakers and they are speaking and you notice that your baby is kind of getting a little irritated or you know kind of unsettling 
and they start to cry or whine or whatever. It's your duty as knowing you're at a professional press conference to just ease to the back so that no one can hear that because it interrupts the press conference and it really uh, take away from the professionalism that they're trying to do. Okay. You know, not, not, not beating up on anybody, anything. I'm just giving you that knowledge of how we do, how we supposed to do at press conference. Cause we automatically know this is a black people press conference. So we don't want to throw the baby in there hooping and hollering and stuff and making it a ghetto press conference. Okay. We have to know how to ease back, walk back, and get out of the way where the microphone don't pick the child up. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Come on now. Come on now. Just just keep that in mind. Please just, it's no problem with having the child there. But you know when it gets to where it's interfering with the speaking, you have to move back. You have to move back. Come on now. All right. Now let's continue. But I, I had to say that. Because I noticed during the press conference, that's all I heard. And the person wouldn't even take under consideration or be respectful enough to just go to the back and handle the baby and make sure they settled or whatever. And once they're settled, come back to the front. When they get a little bit agitated, move back to the back. That's all. That's why I'm so thankful to my partner, Attorney Sue Ann Robinson and Tamika Mallory, these strong black women, saying that it's not just your sister, Tequila. Shaquilla Robinson is all our sister. And if it can happen to Shaquilla Robinson, then it can happen to your sister too. So we all got to stand up for justice for Shaquilla Robinson. Justice for Shaquilla Robinson. Justice for Shaquilla Robinson. Please hit it in the chat. Justice for Shaquilla Robinson. Put it in the chat, family. Put it in the comment section. Family, why I wanted to stop it right there is Cabo 6, y'all, I know they are nervous right about now. Yeah, I do know they kind of shaking in their boots because they actually, the mother and the sister and uh, attorney Ben Crump and attorney Suzanne Robinson, they did speak to someone at the White House. And now it feels like a more positive vibe that they will get at least the due process of this thing. So if they get that due process, yes, Cabo 6 are most likely nervous because they was watching. Oh, yeah, they most likely nervous about this right here. And they should be. They should be. But it's only the due process. They need to be held accountable for what they did to Shanquilla down there in that Cabo Villa. Exactly. Yes. And there's no justification for it. Then yes. just like any other body's children, we want justice for our children. Exactly. We want justice for our children. Exactly. Yes. Because people 
trying to say, oh, you uh, civil rights activists and you social justice activists, it's only when a white person kill a black person do you all start protesting and making a fuss. That is not true. Anytime one of our children is killed unjustly, then we gonna protest and we gonna petition and we gonna challenge the powers that be to say that we want justice for our children and it doesn't matter if the hand that killed our children was a black hand or a white hand that's right we want justice when it is necessary that justice be done people can say this was just it was unnecessary it was uncalled for. It really and was. I'm so sorry. At six months, nobody has been apprehended. Why is that, North Carolina? The murder of your child. But we will not rest peacefully until you can have some measure of peace. That is the commitment from. Our legal team is certainly from Tamika and the activists in Charlotte and everywhere. Nobody's... And you heard him say, everywhere. There will be no peace for you, Calbo 6, until justice is served. And you be held accountable. And the Cafe of Knowledge family is right along there too. You won't get no peace over here. Until Shanquilla gets justice. Point blank period. Now let's listen to whatever else uh, Ben Crump said. Going to let there be peace until we get some justice from Shanquilla Robinson. And with that, with that, we know that there's a war pending in Mexico. Dejanay. And you all are going to hear from my brilliant law partner. Attorney Robinson, Attorney Sue Ann Robinson. Now listen to Sue Ann Robinson speak. Because this um, is well, we said that we hoped that we wouldn't have to be here on the 200th day, but we promised you that we would if we needed to. Because when the FBI declined charges, I know it was hard for the community to understand what was happening and to understand why I was saying we're disappointed, but we're not deterred. But today we're encouraged as. Attorney Ben Crump said, because we had a meeting with the White House and they heard us and they're hearing the family and they're understanding that this is, it is a case that came from the people. It's really the people's movement. Yeah. It's Shankula Robinson. It's her family, their loss, but Shankula is our sister. And I think that the White House is starting to get the message that we're not going to stand down. We're not going to accept no. We're not going to accept later tomorrow, 10 years from now. We're not in that phase. We're in the phase where we understand what we have to do to protect ourselves, to protect black women. We understand that it's Malcolm X's birthday today, and we know what his quote was. We know what he said, that black women were the most disrespected. We were the most unprotected. But we stand here today saying that's that's going to end. We're going to stop using that because it's going to Exactly. We're going to stop using that because we black women are the most unprotected. We are changing that. And we talked about that here on the Knowledge Family. Um, we are starting to talk up for our black women because our black women talk up for everybody. But it seems that everybody don't talk up for us. And so that has to be changed. And I'm so glad to see the black brothers out there participating and having Shanquilla back. But we need a lot more of our brothers participating in things like this because the black women are always on the front line, always on the front line. And we need our brothers to be on the front line as well. That makes a big difference when the brothers are on the front line. And I noticed that they... A lot of people said that it was some men there, but it was still a lot more women there. Black women there, because they're always on the front line for the fight. No matter if it's for our sons, our daughters, our nieces, our nephews, or whatever, we are right there on the front line for the fight. And we need our brothers 
brothers, to step up. And a lot of them do. But we need a lot more to step up and show that the black women are important to the black man and to the black woman. Because the black woman shows both sides. The black man is important to the black woman. And we show that by standing on the front line of everything. Even if they're not black or white, we stand up for everybody. So that's true. And Cabo 6, you heard them. They own your bumper. And I am too, the knowledge family. Yeah, uh-huh. Y'all going to jail. I don't care what you say. Y'all going to jail. Somebody going to walk in the courtroom, I can tell you that. Uh, Y'all need, uh-huh. Yeah, anyway. what she said. If the FBI in North Carolina and DOJs and all them don't want to give Shanquilla any type of justice or give Shanquilla due process about this brutal attack and deletion, then they need to step out the way. Get out the way. That's what the attorney said. Get out the way and let Mexico do it if you don't want to do it or can't do it right or can't do it properly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's going on? I'm telling you, North Carolina, everybody know y'all got stank stank going on. That's what it's, that's what it's giving. that North Carolina? Why did this family have to do all of this themselves? And it was actually North Carolina responsibility to do all of this. Hmm. There's some stank stank going on. Not the so glad that Suzanne Robinson who is no relations to the Robinson family I'll be glad when we can get that from that DOJ King but you know anyway um, she said she giving social media their props and black women their props for standing up voicing talking so that this case 
was noticed and became worldwide important case. So she gave everybody their props. So that's why I said, family, keep commenting, keep talking in the chat, keep Keep on, keep on. Justice for Shanquilla, keep on. Because it makes a difference. We made a difference, most definitely. Talking up for Shanquilla's justice. So let's hear what else she has to say. Oh my goodness, beautiful, bright, amazing daughter was attacked. And something has to be done. That's why the case was brought to the forefront. That's how come her name was continuously said. That's how come we've all become involved. And that's how we are going to continue this movement with the support and the help of all of you who are watching yes. or continuing to say her name because it matters. It, it matters. matters that a U.S. citizen was abroad, a crime was committed against her, and she was returned to her family in a box, and nothing has been done to the individuals who witnessed it, who participated in that. Mm. Cop box, and nothing That's right, Cowboy Six. We're not going to stop staying on y'all bumper until justice is served for Shanquilla Ross. Mm -hmm. Can be served in Mexico, then we're asking the U.S. authorities to get out of the way. Amen. Get out the way. Be served because there is a protocol, there is a precedent. Again, the family is not asking for anything new or different or special or um, preferential treatment. They're asking for something that there's been a treaty in place since 1970. Mm. We saw it with the kidnapping case. Very quickly, the FBI got on the same page with the Mexican authorities yep. in order to resolve that. And they could do that here. Yep. So if we have to come back every 10 days, every 15 days, every 20 days to remind them of what the protocol is, we'll do that. Now, see, that's what gets me. Because, see, the lawyer said if they have to come back to Washington every 10 days, every 20 days, every month, just to let the government know and everybody the proper protocol. North Carolina needs to know the proper protocol. Why is it that they have to do this? Why are they keep putting this family through all this traveling and all these rallies and all these press conference and all that trying to get the people in North Carolina to do the proper protocol when they already know the proper protocol. They're just not doing it. That's what it's given. That's sad. So who is it in North Carolina that don't know the proper protocol? Now they know it. They know the proper protocol. Why isn't the proper protocol being done in North Carolina? Why isn't the due process being done in North Carolina? And then people want to know why we say it's some stank stank over there. Mm -hmm. we'll be here. That's what it's we'll getting. Be here with us supporting this family until the very end. Okay, so ahead, check this out right ahead, here um, so that y'all don't get this twisted. She was saying that she has no relations to the Robinson family. 
But because she's been working on this case so hard and traveling to Mexico on her own and reporting things back to the family and sitting with the family constantly and they have to travel together constantly and they have to do press conference together and they have to do speeches together and they have to go to the media and talk together. They have to do all this together till she said it feels like they're family because we are family as sisters and brothers, we call ourselves, okay? So that's what she was saying there. And listen to this last part that Ben Crump said right quick, because I want to get right on into it. And it hit me. All we want the State Department to do is just do what the protocol is. That's right. The protocol, if you know there's a warrant out there, help orchestrate that person being sent to Mexico to face the evidence and the charges against them. And you all you all do understand there's a plethora of evidence. That's I right. Mean, you got video, you got autopsy, mm -hmm. and you got text messages. Mm -hmm. You got Now listen to that. He said Cowboy Six got text messages, family. So now we can say that the Cowbo 6 text messages has been retrieved. And most likely it's some things in them text messages that say that they was involved in this and kind of what happened and what they did. Okay? Uh-huh, Cowbo 6, you should be very nervous. Anyway. First-hand accounts of them lying mm -hmm. to Shaquilla's mother and sister exactly. in their own living room. Now, why is it, North Carolina, that everybody and the public, the majority of the public and people around this world feels like North Carolina is standing in the way of justice? Why is that? Why do people feel like North Carolina is standing in the way? That's utterly disappointing to say that they feel like Somebody is standing in the way of Shanquilla's justice in North Carolina. That's sad. And it's worldwide. And it's worldwide. This is respicable. Despicable. Uh, so that's all I kind of wanted y'all to hear on that. Check this out. sad that is so sad you know but anyway family you could tell that the lawyer talked about the due process that should take place in this case but the due process hasn't the due process protocol hasn't been done in Shanquilla Robinson's case they seem hopeful and positive that the due process might happen soon. I could tell it it was in all in the air at this press conference. And we will see. But in the meantime, we will stay on the Calbo 6 bumper until due process is started and completed. Oh, yeah, Calbo 6. We're going to stay on your bumper over here. Now, this I want to say something right quick about the... Y'all hit that like button, please, once again. Hit the lights up, please. But anyway, I want to talk about this cow, uh, this uh, bat girl that's on her platform and was talking about 
the title of her thing was Justice for Shanquilla. Now, she wanted to review the uh, press conference that they had. See, that's what we're talking about, these capers and capers for the Cowboy Six. Now, her title had Sh Justice for Shanquilla, but within 20 minutes of this Batgirl caping, for the Cowboy Six, within 20 minutes of her little program, she started talking about, and we, you know, we we, we still never heard about the alcohol level of Shanquilla. Now, let me tell you, she's supposed to be covering this uh, press conference that they had. That press conference did not say nothing about no alcohol poison, but yet she had to bring up, we needed to, we really should know. I wonder why they didn't do a toxicology. I wonder why they didn't check for uh, Shanquilla's alcohol level and all that. There we go. Throwing alcohol monkey wrenches in the game. I said the cowboy uh, six capers and cakers always want to try to throw a monkey wrench in there. Now, she going to say that she's covering the press conference, and the title say Justice for Shanquilla. So you would think that she was talking Justice for Shanquilla. But she did say a little bit about we need Justice for Shanquilla, but the, at the same time threw that alcohol monkey wrench down off on Shanquilla. See, that's what I'm talking about right now. I'm going to start riding these here bumpers. Yes, these capers and cakers, and I'm going to say something about you every time. I don't have to say her name because she automatically know who she is if she's watching this, and most likely she is. Talking about. But they still didn't tell us about Shanquilla's alcohol. They tried to throw a brick in Shanquilla's justice right after the press conference, and the press conference never did say nothing about no alcohol poison, so uh, alcohol in Shanquilla's system, so why did you bring it up? You sounded drunk your damn self on your platform. Uh-huh. Female Batgirl content creator titled Justice for Shanquilla, but at the same time throw the alcohol monkey wrench in Shanquilla's case. Couldn't wait three hours after the press conference before she started talking about something else that the press conference didn't even talk about. Throwing a monkey wrench. That's what I'm telling y'all, family. It is some people out here that is working for the Cowboy Six. And they're trying to do it in a slick and sly way. By saying justice for Shanquilla, but at the same time throwing monkey wrenches at Shanquilla. Death. Yeah. Boy, you know what? I can't wait to start riding these bumpers because it's coming. It's coming. And then you got one that used to talk about Shanquilla very negatively. Talk about her mother very negatively. Talk about her sister very negatively. Oh, every time she came on her platform, she had something negative to say about Shanquilla. Now, all of a sudden, she done did a 360, and she all of a sudden is for Shanquilla justice. Uh-uh, sister, we don't want you, don't need you. We understand what you're doing, sister. We don't trust them kind. Them gatekeepers. They didn't trust gatekeepers back in slavery because they know how they do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, this old bat girl talking about something. But we still don't uh, know about talking about Shanquilla's alcohol level. See, I wonder the autopsy, it was saying everything else. But I wonder why they didn't do an alcohol uh, level report. You know, I wonder why they didn't do that and all that. What that got to do with Shanquilla being brutally beaten and deleted in that villa down there? So, if Shanquilla had alcohol in her system, is what you're saying, that she deserved to be attacked and brutally beaten like that. Make it make sense. See, y'all gonna stop playing with Shanquilla Justice. Yeah, because see, that press conference wasn't even... Two hours later, this person came up there with that monkey wrench. I'm watching. My team watching. Yeah, uh-huh. And Tranquilla family watching too. Mm-hmm. Keep on. Keep on. With that, uh-huh, 
That character, playing with Shinquilla's character. Mm -hmm. Keep on with the disrespect. And see, don't that family most likely going to have you inside that courtroom? Uh-huh, I'm telling you what the little birdies be telling me. Uh-huh, but you trying to tell me that if a person is tipsy and a person is drunk, you can attack a person and delete them. Come on now, make that make sense. It wasn't no alcohol poison. First of all, family, who started the alcohol poisoning anyway? Who started talking about alcohol anyway, family? It was the Cowboy Six. Check it out. Pay attention. Listen to what I say, family. Who bought up alcohol poisoning first? It was the Cowboy Six. They the one put that lie out. So why are we going with a lie that the criminals put out? Hmm. Just because we seen Shanquilla saying toast, drank the night before, everybody was. So, how come all the rest of them don't have alcohol poison? Shaquilla didn't have it either. Okay? So, don't put it like, I wonder what her level was. So, you telling me that if she had a little bit of alcohol in her system, that is supposed to be the defense of why Shanquilla was attacked? And beating like that? Come on, now make it make sense. It wasn't no alcohol poison. Everybody want to talk about wonder what her alcohol level was. What? That's the Cowboy Six started that up. So family, think about it. If the Cowboy Six started that lie, and then other people start running with that lie and keep saying they wants to know about what her alcohol level is and all that stuff like that. That means that they are talking for the Cowboy 6 and the Cowboy 6 lie that they created. And they most likely getting paid for the Cowboy 6 to keep bringing up that lie to try to bring a monkey wrench inside of Shinquilla's justice. Because nobody said nothing about no alcohol. Even when the doctors or the whoever the paramedics or whatever came into that villa. The first thing they were told is alcohol poison. And that came from the Capital Six. That came, that was their lie alibi. And we're going to talk about that in a minute because I'm going to get deep, family. I'm going to get real deep. So why would somebody else pick up that lie and keep running with that lie and putting it inside of Shanquilla's case. When there's no evidence of that. Oh well why didn't they do one? Because her body clearly said. It was beaten. Badly. So they start autopsying on that. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. So tie these bat girls and bat guys. Caping and caking. For the Cowboy Six. Mm, Y'all gonna stop playing with Shanquilla Bumper. Because I'm getting ready to ride y'all bumper. Y'all gonna quit playing with her justice. So if a person is drunk, that means it's okay to attack them and delete them. That's just like family. If y'all standing outside on the sidewalk and a drunk person or a tipsy person walk past y'all and somebody just come and jump and attack and delete that person, that drunk person, y'all are gonna say, Oh, man, they, you know, they passed away because they was drunk or they was tipsy. Or are you going to say, man, that person beat the mess out of them and that's why they passed. You're going to say that on the police report. If somebody asks you to be a witness, I, you know, I came outside and they was just whooping on that person. They was whooping on them. And then all of a sudden they went limp and they gone. Yeah. You ain't gonna start off saying, oh, he was he was tipsy and drunk, so he just dropped and fell out. No, because that's not what happened. Man, she sounded drunk saying all that. Just because a person is like that, that don't mean it is okay to be attacked and deleted. She sounded drunk when she was saying all that. But anyway, let me get off that. But I just had to get that off my chest. Uh-huh. Piss me off. So we're going to continue to talk about that press conference when we do the live show this Sunday coming up. Don't forget, May 28th at 6 p.m. Central Time. 
Okay, now let's talk about these Cabo Six false imprisonment charges. Yes, because we got that on y'all too. Cabo Six, Dejanay, Winter, Nizia, Elise, Khalil, and Malik definitely need some of these charges slapped on them real quick, fast, and in a hurry. Cabo Six need these new charges. Yeah, just like we got those new charges for y'all on. Revenge P. And you better believe some of these charges are most likely going to hit y'all pretty soon. Uh-huh. Uh, just like that Class H felony that we had on y'all. Yeah, now we looked up this uh, here force imprisonment because we seen some things on y'all video, okay? That y'all so-called did and thought it was cute and funny, okay? But anyway, hopefully the Attorney General and Biden intervene and look into Shanquilla's case and, oh, you know, make sure that the Cowboy Six are held accountable and Shanquilla gets due process, okay? And, um, because something real, it, it stinks real hard in North Carolina, you know, because we need these criminals to be charged of deletion. Oh, trifling demon six. But anyway, the knowledge family is definitely pushing for these charges, and you best to believe that the family is looking at the Cowboy Six. Yes, 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 the uh, Robinson family do look at my video. Yes, they do. I know they do, okay? Now, uh, and they be checking everything out. So y'all going to jail. Y'all going to go to jail. You just watch and see. Mm -hmm, just watch and see. Keep on playing out here. But anyway, these false imprisonment charges, family, they need them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do need them. But before we get into that, let me get on Joya Elise Bumper with her little smart tweets and stuff that she had to put out. Now, that's Joy Elise family, uh, her Twitter, okay? And she said some little smart things, and y'all see that she also went to that uh, Winston-Salem State Alumni uh, University thing along with the rest of them, okay? And y'all see that she was born February the 9th, okay? And she got about, she following about, 995 people, okay? But now it's 2,361 people following her, okay? So, uh, anyway, uh, that's her family. This is her Twitter page, okay? And she said some smart stuff on this Twitter page. So, let me start talking about her right quick because I got to ride her bumper because this is what we ain't going to do. With her smart mouth to self. Yeah, uh-huh, with your smart mouth to self, sister. Now, this is what she did. This is what she tweeted here right after the little incident that they had at that electric kilo bar. And that's another thing. Dejanay, what was you doing down there at the electric kilo bar? Tequila bar anyway. Because, see, Mexico got a whole lot of tequila down there. And they want you. Why you ain't taking and booking a flight down there to Mexico and get all the tequilas you want? They got it. Mexico got all kind of flavors. They got all kind of nice glasses to put it in and all that. You wants to go to North Carolina electric tequila when you can clearly get all the tequila you want down there in Mexico. So why you ain't down there ordering tequila? Because they said they want to talk to you and they need to talk to you. Uh-huh. Why you ain't doing that? When I seen her at an electric tequila, why is you at a North Carolina tequila getting the bootleg kind when you could go and get the real kind down there in Mexico? Because they want you. You ain't going to waste your money. Go down there. They got a whole lot of tequila down there for you. And they waiting on you. Been asking for you for the longest. Since you like to drink tequila. They got it down there for you. But anyway, back to this Joy Elise with her smart mouth to sell. This is what she wrote, family. And them H's trying to use the Quilla situation for clout. Because that fight ain't had nothing to do with that at all. So first of all, family, see, I told you, if you get, y'all give a backyard barbie enough rope, they will grab that rope and jump clean in the dumpster. Because what she did was basically told she was there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what she did. It ain't had nothing to do with no Shanquilla. Uh, no, it didn't have anything to do with Shanquilla. And I told everybody that. 
this has something to do with them targeting another victim. They was looking for their next Shinquilla. That's why she specifically said them H's trying to use Quilla situation for clout. Because that fight ain't have none to do with that at all. No, it didn't. I told y'all, family, didn't I tell y'all that they was targeting their next victim? It didn't have nothing to do with Shinquilla. It had something to do with they was targeting their next victim. Point blank period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she told on herself. That's what backyard Barbies do. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm center of attention because I'm pregnant and fighting. Laugh my, we you know, whatever off. Okay, that's what she said. Okay. Then she says this, family. Somebody who got beat up should have effed up face. Mine look just fine. So she telling you right there. That, uh, yeah, she did get into a scuffle, but it really didn't hurt her. Her face ain't messed up, so the girl really didn't do nothing to her. That's what she's saying. See, she's bragging, family. See, you're bragging, Joya. You're bragging. They say I'm pregnant and fighting. That's insane. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What a smart mouth self. Uh-huh. Then she says this. Like, what the F? I can't even be fat in peace. Mm-hmm. I am not pregnant. Mm-hmm. So, y'all see what she got there. She guess she's center of attraction, attention, and all that. No, you're not, sister. No, you're not, sister. Uh-huh. You know, so that's her talking about her face ain't messed up and all that stuff. Now, this is what I want to get to. This girl done said, Joy Elise tweet tweeted this May 9th, family, and said, to tequila fest what is it about tequila with the cowboy six and they friends they love tequila and they might need to put the tequila down because that's what probably got them in most of all this old criminal behavior anyway see people some people know when they drink something it makes them come out their body in a negative way so they say nah i can't drink no more of that because uh when I drink that, I don't know. You know, people telling me that I start stuff or I curse people out. Or I do that. So then you tend to lay off that type of liquor and you go to something else that don't make you act like that. Or you just stop drinking altogether. Okay. But here we go. Tequila Fest. She looking for a tequila fest. They love tequila. You know, they was at the electric tequila when they got in that mess and tried to attack that girl and make that girl their next victim. And then she talking about tequila fest. Why nobody told me about this? Uh-huh. Now, the tequila fest was in ATL, in Atlanta, family. And y'all know that's my stomping ground, okay? Yes, uh-huh. Now, didn't nobody tell you about it, Joy or Leash? Because then nobody want you there. Don't nobody in Georgia want you at their fest, okay? Point blank, period. Okay, so now y'all see... That she talking about Tequila Fest. Why nobody told me about this? So this was the Tequila Fest family, as y'all see. It was a lot of people in the ATL. They had a Tequila Fest, okay? Now, this girl here wants to go to the uh, Tequila Fest. She said, like, TF, this my type of event. No, it ain't your type of event. See, that's what we're talking about right now. The Tequila thing got y'all in a whole bunch of mess because even the concierge said y'all walked in there with some liquor not you because your name wasn't on the sheet i don't know if you was there or not but your name wasn't on the sheet and the concierge said the only people that was there was the people name on the sheet so i'm we sticking with the facts okay but anyway no didn't nobody want you at the uh atl event no we did why nobody told me about this i could tell you why because ATL and Georgia don't want you down now. That's why nobody told you, Joya Elise, about this event because Georgia don't want you there. The citizens of Georgia don't want you there because you start trouble. It's obvious you do. You help the leaders attack people. You help the leaders attack innocent people and delete innocent people. You was trying. Y'all was trying. Y'all was trying, Joya Elise. Y'all was trying to make that next girl, y'all victim, down there at that electric tequila. I told everybody that. And see, my stomping ground is ATL. 
and the majority of ATL and Georgia citizens say they don't want you there. Don't come down there spanking up their city. Oh, you are your bootleg friends. Uh-huh. You, the Calbo Six, and that other friend y'all got with the bootleg Bruce Lee outfit on, Georgia didn't want you there. That's why you nobody told you about the tequila fest they had down there in the ATL. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that right now. Alabama don't want you. Because, see, all these are my stomping ground. Louisiana don't want you. Florida don't want you. Georgia don't want you. None of them want you. They don't want you polluting up their state and their city with y'all criminal behavior. Alabama don't want y'all down there polluting up the joint. No, they don't. Louisiana don't want y'all down there stinking up the joint, stinking up the Mardi Gras stink. Uh-uh. Y'all stinking up the Mardi Gras stink. Uh-uh. They say stay home. They don't want you there. They don't want you there. So that's why ain't nobody told y'all. Y'all ain't want it nowhere. Why ain't, no, why ain't nobody told me? Because we don't want you around our states and cities. Y'all stay over there in North Carolina with all that mess. Don't bring it to nobody else, city. No, we don't. We don't want you. ATL definitely didn't want you down there trying to target another victim about their phone. Because that's all that was going to happen. You were going to get down there to the ATL and then go to that tequila fest. And you and the Calbo 3 or whoever, Calbo 6, we're going to start targeting y'all next victim. We know how you operate because you did it down there at the electric tequila. Mm -hmm. So why was you, first of all, I want to talk about this. Why was you wearing that awful jumpsuit that had them grandma flowers on it like you got it out of grandma closet? That's what I want to know. Now that outfit that you was uh, tussling and the girl was throwing you on the ground and running you around, like just mopping you all over that ground. Why you had that outfit on with those big old leaves and flowers all over that jumpsuit? You look like a fresh, dry, walking flower garden. That's what you look like. Needed water. That's what it looked like. A walking flower garden that's itching for water. That was terrible. This is 2023. Don't nobody wear no outfit with them big old leaves and flowers all over the clothes. Uh, unless they going to a garden festival. Was you going to a garden festival? Because I was told that you went to a graduation. And then after the graduation, you went to this electric tequila to bar, whatever, to celebrate a friend or whatever graduation. So they ain't say nothing about you going to a garden festival, but that showed how you look like you was headed to a garden festival. Y'all been running and hiding so long until y'all don't even know what's in style. Uh-huh. But I can tell you, wearing an outfit with big leaves and flowers all over it ain't it. Mm -mm. Then the jumpsuit had the nerve to have a halter top attached to it. What in the world? What in the what? I was like, what is this girl wearing? Please give Grandma back her outfit. Lord have mercy. If you didn't get it out your grandmama closet, then you need to hurry up and run back to that store and get you a refund. Because that wasn't it, baby. That wasn't it. See, that's what I'm talking about. If Shanquilla was here, she could have sold you a nice outfit so you wouldn't be running around looking like a grandma in your 20s. Uh-huh. See how valuable Shanquilla life was, people? Because if Shanquilla was here and the Cowboy 6 hadn't attacked her and deleted her, then Joya would have been able to get a fly outfit from Shanquilla to wear at that little graduation and at the electric tequila bar. See, if Shanquilla was here, she could have dressed you better than that because I can tell you right now, that was not it. Mm -mm. See, if Shanquilla was here, she could have had you looking fly, sister. But no! See, that's what I'm talking about. The Calbo 6 deleted an important person. Because Shanquilla was surely needed that day you put on 
that old jumpsuit with the flowers on it and the big old leaves on it like you got it out your grandma's closet. Shanquilla was surely needed that day to dress your ass. Yes, uh-huh, because that what you had on was trash. It really was. It really was. I'm sorry that outfit was trash. It really was. So I want to tell you that. No, don't. they don't want you. So don't even worry about why ain't nobody told you. I just told you why ain't nobody told you about the tequila fest that went on down there in the ATL, in the underground ATL. I'm telling you right now why they didn't tell you they don't want you there. And Alabama don't want you there because, see, these are my stomping ground. And I know what people are saying. They don't want y'all there. Florida don't want you there. Louisiana don't want you there. Now, I can only speak for those states because those are my stomping ground. And I know what the people are saying. I'm talking about black, white, whatever, all colors do not want the Cowboy Six and their friends there. I'm telling you. Now, let's get on with Shanquilla. I had to read this one talking about, like, the F. This my type of event. We don't care if it's your type of event or not, uh, your backyard, Barbie. We don't care if it's your event or not. We don't want you in our states and our city. And I'm quite sure there are other states and cities that feel the same way. But I can tell you right now, that's why you didn't know about it, because they don't want you there. You're not welcome, because you're criminals. And when you fight somebody the way you did out there on them streets, you hang with criminals and you were showing criminal behavior by attacking somebody about their phone. We saw you trying to sneak up on somebody and get a lick in and stuff. We saw you. Mm-hmm. You hang with criminals, so we already know what you about. So let's get on down to these false imprisonment charges, family. Uh, I'm finna run through it real quick here. Now. Cabo 6, why did y'all block and box Shanquilla in her room? That's what we want to know. Why did y'all block Shanquilla so that she couldn't escape that horrible attack? Uh-huh. See, right here, family, you got somebody. You see right here, family. You see this person right here. One of the Cowboy Six are standing in the doorway. And you, we all know that it was more in the room, okay? We know that they, all the Cowboy Fives was in the room, and the other Cowboy uh, girl, Dejanae Jackson, was attacking Shanquilla, okay? So, once again, why did y'all have all exits blocked to that room? See, they were standing here, which blocks the entranceway of Shanquilla leaving that room. And then Dejanae always stayed by the slide door. Yes, yeah, she did. See, Dejanae, you see right there? Dejanae stayed by the slide door. So every time Shanquilla wanted to at least try to get to the slide door, because see, Dejanae knew if Shanquilla got to that slide door, Shanquilla would escape. So they blocked it. She blocked it. And every time Shanquilla looked like she was getting close to that door. Dejanae attacked hard. Yes, she did. Mm-hmm. That's that hardcore criminals. That's what they do. They block their victims' exits. And they block their victims' escape. They blocked every exit that Shanquilla was blocked in to endure that attack and deletion. Yeah. See, that's what gang members do and hardcore criminals do when they're getting ready to delete someone. Think about it, family. Think about some of the gangster movies y'all have seen. Think about it now, because that's what they do. Think about how they block all the exits from their victim and surround the victim just before they attack. Think about some of these uh, gangster movies that y'all done seen when they bring a victim inside of the white... Uh, um, bring a victim inside of the warehouse and you notice like if the boss say I want that person here and they bring that victim there in the warehouse you notice how all the boys and the girls or whoever is the mob boss people 
they block all the exits to the warehouse so that victim cannot get out. Mm -hmm. They block all the exits so that that victim has to endure either the torture they finna get and the deletion they finna get. But what they do do in those gangster movies is block all the exits. Think about it, family. They block all the gates that go up and down, like when the cars come in. They block all the exits to entryways. They block all that for that victim to endure a torture or a deletion. And both. Or both. Uh-huh. And that's exactly what the Cowboy 6 set up for Shanquilla. It is. Once again, Cowboy 6, why did y'all box Shanquilla in a room? Blocked off all exits so Shanquilla couldn't escape that brutal attack and deletion. I told y'all I'm on y'all bumper. And we want new charges of false imprisonment because y'all did that. Dejanae Jackson blocked the slide doors making sure she prevented Shanquilla from exiting that way. And then every time Shanquilla looked like she was trying to get towards that slide door, Dejanae would attack Shanquilla harder. Yes, she would. And the other Cowboy Six was blocking the doorway to that room where you enter and exit out of. So, how did the Cowboy Six know to secure all perimeters? They blocked all exits. So, it tells me this was premeditated. Yeah, it was premeditated. That's what it tells me. It was premeditated. How did the Cowboy Six know to secure? To secure all perimeters for Shanquilla's attack because they planned it. That's what criminals do. That's what gangsters do. Yes, they planned it. They planned it. Look at this. They planned it. See, every time Shanquilla looked like she wanted to sneak toward that door, Dejanae blocked it off. She blocked it off and then start attacking Shanquilla harder. Because, see, that room got four walls. And I'm going to show y'all that, the entryway. We're going to take a tour around Shanquilla's room that she was in. Uh-huh. Let's check out those false imprisonment that Cowbo 6 got. See there? Now, this part right here is when um, Dejanae slung Shanquilla. That was Shanquilla. Last moments right there. See, everybody want to talk about something else, like that, all that, that, that. Shanquilla was almost gone right there. She was fighting for her life right there. She was sitting there. She would kind of move a little bit, move her head a little bit or whatever. But that was the fatal blow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, she made sure Shanquilla didn't get to these doors here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you can see Shanquilla laying there, not really moving. When she slung Shanquilla like that, I said, Lord. And Shanquilla just stayed there. That was it. That was it. Yeah, she moved a little bit, whatever, whatever, whatever. But nobody seen Shanquilla get back up and try to go towards that exit. No more. Mm-hmm. She wasn't able to. No, she wasn't. Uh-huh. See that? How Dejanae keep blocking? See, that was when Shanquilla, that's when she threw and slung Shanquilla, and Shanquilla was still laying there, and then there she is, still blocking the slide door exit. Uh-huh. Yeah, still blocking it. See? She was blocking it. She was blocking it. She was blocking it. This is before she slung Shanquilla. I was sure. And these are the Cowbo Six. You see the sleeves of one. But the Cowbo Six was lined up all around that exit way to come into that bedroom. Yes, they did. They knew exactly what they were doing. See how they you see how Dejanae is guarding that? She guarding that. She guarding that. Shanquilla can't get out of there. Look at that. She guarding that. Shanquilla can't get out of there. So this is the entrance of the cow. Uh, Cabo Villa. And you see, I'm just taking a little tour so everybody could see how that villa looked. It's called Villa 32. And this is how it looked, family. Mm -hmm. That's how it looked. See, the Cabo 6 stayed in formation while filming Shanquilla's attack. 
They stayed in formation, family. If you notice, they was too organized. That was a premeditated attack, a premeditated deletion. It was a premeditated plan. Just pay attention to their calmness. How calm their behavior was while the attack was going on. You ain't hear nobody be like, ooh, wow. Oh, man. Oh, 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 she dropped it. She did. She. You didn't hear nobody say all that. You just heard it was so calm in there. Like they used to seeing this type of behavior. Like they used to doing this type of behavior. Like they have done this before. That didn't even phase them. Check it out, family. And Malik's voice was so calm. Hey, Quilla, aren't you going to at least fight back? See, they're used to this. It wasn't no excitement. Wasn't nobody excited. No. That's what they do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then nobody get excited. So, they used to seeing this. And that tells me. It screams. This whole thing screamed premeditated. Because how did they know how to form a perimeter like that and don't move from that perimeter. They set that box up so Shanquilla couldn't even get out no type of way. She couldn't get out the slide door way and she couldn't get out the exit way that enters and exits out of the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It screams premeditated. And that's what they did. Uh-huh. So... That's the villa. Real nice. Mm-hmm. That's the villa. That's the kitchen part there. That's where they was all eating at. Okay? And people say, oh, well, it was an extra chair there at the villa. The villa have one, two, three, and it's three on that side, which is six, seven, eight chairs anywhere. So, they have that. Regardless, if four people show up, those chairs still going to be there. That don't mean that those chairs were set for somebody to attend. That's how they set up their villa with eight chairs. Boy, I tell you. That's the living room part, okay? That's that so-called game room. I'm suspecting that. You know, Nigeria, somebody, oh, we was in the game room, and then we made it. To the living room. Mm hmm. That's the bath. That's how the bathroom looked. Very nice villa. Now, that was the room that when Shanquilla was running around, running around trying to look for her buddies and all that kind of stuff, and she couldn't find them. And then all of a sudden, she ran into them while they were plotting and planning in a whole nother room. And that looks like the room that they was in. Uh huh. Now, this is Shanquilla room. Check out what I'm talking about, family. Check out what I'm talking about. You see them slide doors? That's where Dejanay kept hiding, kept standing, kept standing, would not let Shanquilla get out of that villa. She kept that whole area sold up, so Shanquilla couldn't even attempt to make an escape. Uh-huh, you remember? Shanquilla was over here, in this area right here. And then you notice the wall, uh-huh, so it wasn't no exit there. So you got one, two, three, that's an exit. And then the fourth exit, I mean the fourth wall, so-called, is the exit, okay? So if you look at it, it was only two ways to get out of that room. Slide door, and right over here where the Cowboy 6 was standing. You remember we seen the phones they was holding? They was, they were standing right here off in this area. So they blocked that exit for Shanquilla to get out of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why y'all do that, uh, Cowboy 6? Uh-huh. So y'all see, it wasn't but two ways out of that room. The slide door and the entrance to that room. And they blocked every last one of them. They set up perimeter. They set up a block for her to take that attack and to take that deletion. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Premeditated. That's what it screams. Premeditated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nigeria specifically said that they planned this Cabo Mexico trip in June. So they had four months to plan this attack 
on Shanquilla. And poor Shanquilla didn't even know she was the plan for Cowboy Mexico. And she was the target for Cowboy Mexico. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about them. You see, it says the video footage shows an attack where a woman identified as Robinson is severely beaten inside a bedroom is part of the ongoing law enforcement investigation. The footage show Robinson, who is naked, not fighting back and falling to the ground. That was what I showed y'all when Deja Nay slung her by her neck and stuff and Shanquilla fell down there and I showed y'all how Shanquilla was sitting. She didn't move no more for real. She 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 did a little hand movement, so she you know like wow you know like a, a shake or, or whatever. But she didn't she didn't have no more stand up stand up strength in her body. No, she did. Mm -mm. Okay, so now a person commits false imprisonment when they engage in the act of restraint on another person with confined that person in a restricted area. False imprisonment is an act punishable under the criminal law as well as under tort law, okay? Under the tort law, it is classified as an intentional tort. Mm-hmm, yeah, uh-huh, Capo 6. In fact, a person who intentionally restricts another freedom of movement without the consent may be liable for false imprisonment. False imprisonment is both a crime and a civil wrong, like other offenses, including assault and battery. Uh-huh, y'all got that too. Anyway, it can occur in a room or the streets or even in a vehicle. So if somebody blocks you from getting out their car or somebody blocks you on the street and won't let you go, they blocking you and boxing you in or in a room. And that's exactly what they did. Uh-huh, Cabo 6. Told y'all I was going to be on y'all bumper. Hit them likes, please. Hit that like button, please. Anyway, is blocking doorways false imprisonment like kidnapping, okay? A variety of conduct may constitute false imprisonment. You may be charged with false imprisonment if you physically restrain a person, preventing the person from leaving. You may also be charged with false imprisonment if you block, if you block the door, preventing the person from leaving. Uh-huh, cap, oh, see. Y'all gonna get some new charges on y'all. And I know the family be watching my video. And uh, most likely these charges gonna come down on you after they get all this other stuff out the way and try to get Dejanay Fishstick Jackson uh, extradited over there to Mexico and all that. Y'all finna be, y'all bumpers finna be torn off. Yes, it is. Uh-huh. But anyway, uh, family, see that's what I'm talking about the knowledge family see because we're gonna find something for you. We're gonna find something for you, Cabo Six. We're gonna find some charges for y'all. Extra new charge. Uh-huh. Cause see all this stuff could be done in a civil suit or it could just be handed down to you as new charges. Uh-huh. It ain't even gotta be connected to the charges that y'all facing right now. These could be whole new charges. Uh-huh. I told y'all I was riding y'all bumper. And I'm close. And I told y'all y'all tags are just about to expire. I told y'all that a couple of weeks ago. Uh-huh. But anyway, uh, what actions would be considered false imprisonment? False imprisonment generally refers to the confinement of a person without their consent. We already said that. You know what I'm saying? If a person is wrongly uh, prevents another from leaving a room... Or a vehicle that person wants to leave. You know Shanquilla wanted to get out of there because you can see her trying to work herself to that slide door kind of in a sneak way like she was trying to plan like if I could just reach that knob, man, I'm going to run up out of here. You know, even with her being naked, she was she was trying to get to that slide door. But Dejanay already knew because they pre-planned this. It was premeditated. They had already planned, oh, she ain't getting out that slide door. I got the slide door. Y'all just make sure y'all got the exit. Because that's exactly how their formation was. Uh-huh. Yes, it was. Uh-huh. False imprisonment might carry felony charges if the defendant threatened violence. Yeah, they did that. Harm the victim. Yeah, they did that. Place the victim at risk of serious harm. Uh, yes, they did that. Okay? So, we don't have to worry about also about the child restraints or whatever. But, felony convictions can result in 10 years in prison or more. 
Uh huh, capital six. Yeah, uh huh. Is blocking someone's way assault? Yes, it is. Blocking someone is harassment. Uh huh. What follows could be assault, and that's exactly what follows. See, when you block somebody exit, family, just like I had just said to y'all, that when you block somebody exit, you most likely is finna do an assault on that person, a battery on that person, okay? And that's exactly what they did. They blocking is provoking and intimidating and abusive. They did all that. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. And then you see right here, what are the penalties for false imprisonment? A conviction of false imprisonment can lead to substantial penalties. Depending on the state and the circumstances of the case, false imprisonment can be charged as either a misdemeanor or felony offense. Okay? Felony offenses are the more serious of the two and have stiffer penalties associated with them. Now, what I'm saying about this right here is they can get these false imprisonment charges on them because remember, Shanquilla has lost income. She Her business is suffering and all that. Her family has to put out money. Her family was, um, you know, they was taken out of all just about draining their income and all that stuff. They can't work because they got to go to rallies. They can't hold down a job. It just has flipped the Robinson family world upside down. So, yes, they can get these charges. And the family can fight for these charges here in the United States because they suffered a terrible loss. Financial and Shanquilla. Financial status. Yeah, uh-huh. Her business, all that stuff. So, yeah, Cabo 06. And, you know, misdemeanor convictions can lead up to a year jail time is saying right here. Okay, so that's what I just want to say. Cabo 6, y'all need these. Uh, physical abuse, we already know, includes hitting, punching, choking, restraining, or blocking exits so the victim cannot leave. Uh-huh, Cabo 6, see, we on your bumper over here on the cafe of knowledge. We don't play with you because y'all criminals. Y'all need to be off the streets. Y'all are dangerous. Y'all done already, within six months after Shankula's death, tried to attack another innocent victim over there in North Carolina. And it would have worked if she didn't have her friends and the public out there to help her. Because believe you me, if that girl had went out that door by herself, it would have been over. So thank the Lord it didn't happen like that. And that girl need to be thanking her lucky stars that she didn't go to that club by herself just to chill. Because she was in serious danger. This is what Cabo 6 do. Mm-hmm. False imprisonment. Mm-hmm. So I told y'all all that already. Okay? So now let's go. Oh, let me show y'all this right here. Because the false imprisonment consequences. Uh, it says right here, for civil cases, the plaintiff can file for a lawsuit against the defendant for false imprisonment charges. The plaintiff can then seek compensation for damages including physical harm or injury. Yes, sustained. Yes, it was that sustained for Shanquilla and her family can file for that. Uh-huh. Right here. Uh-huh. And then it says physical harm or injuries. Yes, they did that to Shanquilla. Pain and suffering damages. Yeah, that's for the family because the family definitely have a lot of pain and suffering going on. Okay. Loss of time. They definitely got a lot of loss of time because they got to travel all over to Washington and North Carolina and they got to go down in different states and cities. They went to New York and all that. Trying to fight for justice for Shanquilla. And then they having rallies in North Carolina at an AME church. They just they time is just being taken when all North Carolina had to do was charge these people. It's clear on the evidence, it's clear on the videos, it's clear on the autopsy, it's clear on a lot of things. So the family did have a have a whole lot of loss of time and they continue to have a loss of time. Okay? Now Interruption of business. Yes, they interrupted Shanquilla business. Yes, they did. And other expenses that the family is coming out. So, yes, yes, yes. Come on. Y'all going down. Y'all going down. Y'all going down, Cabo 6. Now, is blocking a doorway false imprisonment? We always talked about that. Yes, it is. Okay? And these are the uh, four leading physicals of abuse. This is what they did to Shanquilla when they blocked her exit. You know? They made... 
making angry or threatening gestures. Y'all remember uh, Dejanay? I'm tired of this bee. I'm tired of this bee. Why she whooping on Shinquilla? Uh-huh. Yes, you did, you old fish stick. Yes, you did that. And then it got down here menacing ways, standing in the doorway. Or concern, considering you doing an argument. So, uh, yeah. So, she, they were doing all that. They were doing all that. And that, that's the most part I want y'all to see. Standing in the doorway. Uh-huh. Yes, they did do all that. Capo 6, y'all need false imprisonment right there. Y'all need false imprisonment. And I'm quite sure it probably come down. And because, see, my team sent all the stuff to the proper people anyway. But the uh, Robertson family and some of, um, like, aunts, uncles, and stuff like that, I already know they'd be watching the Knowledge family. I already know they watch the Knowledge Channel. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, what is it called when someone blocks you from leaving? False imprisonment. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Cal Post 6. In North Carolina, this is North Carolina law. As such, an extension element under this theory includes, number one, the illegal restraint of a person. Number two, by false or threat of force. Okay? And three, without the other person consent or against their will. So, yeah, they did do it in a threat. By force, that's Dejanay. Because every time Shanquilla tried to walk to the slide door, it was force, attack, given on Shanquilla. Or threat. A force. She did that too. I'm tired. I'm tired. Uh huh. Yeah, they were blocking her. They were blocking her. They were blocking her. They did block her. And in North Carolina, as you see, you face a class one misdemeanor uh, punishable by up to 120 days in jail and a fine that will be set at the court's discretion. Okay? Uh, charges of false imprisonment are accompanied by. Uh, allegations of kidnapping, which is a much more serious charge. So the point is that the Capo Six, they could get at least 120 days for this right here. And if certain things come out while they are in court about forced imprisonment, they can do more time. Yes, they, they could do up to like 10 years. Uh-huh. See, North Carolina forced imprisonment is the illegal restraint is the illegal restraint of a person against his or her will. Mm-hmm. Fundamentally, a cause of action for false imprisonment is based on the deprivation. Mm-hmm. 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 Of one liberty without any legal process. And they did all that, family. They did all that, family. Yes, the Cow Bowl Six did all that. Yes, they did. Now, let me say this right quick, family. So, y'all need false imprisonment charges. Point blank, period. I'm sorry. They do. So, got some. I got that charge for y'all, too. Uh, Cabo 6. Mm -hmm. So, we got the Class H felony. And then we got these false imprisonment charges for y'all. Mm -hmm. Most likely, these going to hit y'all when a lot of this stuff. I'm trying to see what's going to go on with this expedition and the family still fighting. But they got it. They got it on lock for you. I'm quite sure they do. But anyway, I ain't going to talk too much about that. But anyway, let me go on to this. Because, see, Nazir specifically said that they planned this whole thing ever since June. So they gave them four months to plan this on Shinkula, okay? Now, she trusted Khalil. Right here, the snake. She trusted Khalil when he convinced her to go on this trip to the so-called celebration of Dejanay and Nizia's birthday, okay? Now, family, I want y'all to listen to me real closely because this trip wasn't because of no Nizia and Dejanay birthday. Come on, family. Let me school the knowledge, family, okay? This trip was not about no Dejanay celebrate, want to celebrate her birthday, or Nizia want to celebrate his birthday, okay? Let's go ahead on and get that out in the open. They think they smooth with that bootleg alibi lie of a birthday trip. But the knowledge family saw smooth clean through that whole lie, okay? Now, check this out, family. Let's talk about this smooth lie that the Cowboy Six told to the public and to the family and to everybody else. You know what I'm saying? But they used that birth 
that birthday lie. That was a perfect lie to lure Shanquilla to Cabo, Mexico. They used that perfect lie for the public. Okay? Now, they knew Khalil, he knew if it was just any ordinary time and said, hey, Shanquilla, let's go to Mexico. Let's go. She'd be like, for what? Um, we just want to go down there and chill. Nah, because you know Shanquilla already had a busy schedule. Nah, I don't want to do that. So, they waited to around Dejanay birthday and Nazir birthday so they can say they want to go to Mexico for these two here birthday. Dejanay birthday and Nazir birthday. But it's quite strange that neither one of them really spent their birthday in Cabo, Mexico. But that was why they were supposed to be in Cabo, Mexico is to celebrate their birthday. But neither one of them really celebrated their birthday in Cabo, Mexico. Uh-huh. That's because... Cowboy Mexico birthday lie was an alibi to get Shanquilla down there and lure her down there. It wasn't about their birthday. I'm finna tell you about it, family. But here it go. This is uh the knowledge family's opinion and the knowledge team opinion, okay? Now, if Dejanay was so excited to spend her birthday in Cabo, Mexico, why was she back in the United States before her birthday? Uh-huh. Let's talk about it because, see, Dejanay birthday... Is October the 30th. They went back home on the 29th. So she was in the United States for her birthday. So really her birthday wasn't all that. That really wasn't what she was going to Cabo for. Because if so, she would have spent her birthday in Cabo. Okay? Then you got Nazir. His birthday was on the 22nd. So his birthday was way before the trip was. Okay? So he didn't really celebrate his birthday there either. Okay? Now follow me, family. Follow me, family. Okay, so why did Dejanay come back home before her birthday? She jetted out of Cabo, Mexico on the 29th. That's the day before her birthday. If Cabo, Mexico was Dejanay's birthday gift to herself, she's so excited to spend her birthday in Cabo. Oh, Cabo, I've been waiting on this for a couple of years to go to Cabo for my birthday. If it really was like that, why was she back in the United States family on her birthday? She did not spend her birthday in Cabo, Mexico. That was the alibi lie. She spent her birthday. She was back home on she was back home on 30th. She she spent her birthday in the United States. Cause it wasn't all about no birthday trip to Cabo, Mexico. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Now. If that was her true goal to spend her birthday in Mexico, why was she back in the United States on her birthday? Why did she even attack Shanquilla and delete Shanquilla before her birthday? Ain't this supposed to be her birthday getaway? Ain't this supposed to be her exciting time for her birthday? Why is that, Dejanay? Because it never was about going to Cabo, Mexico to enjoy Dejanay birthday or Nazir birthday. That was just a perfect alibi for everyone to draw Shanquilla to Cabo, Mexico. That was the perfect lie to lure her there. And they did that. They did that. And they also tried to pass it off to the public because that's why they went to Cabo, Mexico. But you couldn't fool the knowledge family. That's one thing you can't do. Uh-uh. I ain't have no success for over 30 years for nothing. Let me get that to you straight, Cowboy Six. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure going to keep Shanquilla name in our mouth over here because y'all going to jail. It wasn't about no birthday. Check it out. Dejanay was home before her birthday. Nazir had already celebrated his birthday before he even went down there to Cabo, Mexico. So it really wasn't about no birthday. Because if Dejanay was all that excited, she would have... She would have stayed to the 30th. You know, remember they said it wasn't supposed to go home to the 31st, remember? So why didn't she do that attack on Shanquilla on the 31st, the morning that they was already fin to a uh, return to Cabo? See, they weren't thinking like that because that wasn't really what it was. They were just trying to get the Cabo to do the attack and the deletion on Shanquilla. That's all it was. Because if she really wanted to spend Cabo her birthday in Cabo, Mexico, they was, they was supposed to return home on the 31st. Remember Nigeria told it? They were supposed to return home on the 31st. So why didn't Dejanay 
attack Shanquilla on the 31st. Because then they already had their tickets to come on back home. And they could have came on back home and all that. No, that's because they wasn't thinking like that. That wasn't how it supposed to go, family. That that when we think I don't want to spend my birthday in Mexico for real. I'm trying. I came here only to do a mission, and that was to attack Shanquilla and delete Shanquilla. That's why we all came. It wasn't about no birthday. No, it what? So what was the real purpose of the trip, Cowboy Six? Is just what I said. It was a birthday alibi. The real purpose was to lure Shanquilla down there, delete her. That was the real purpose. Mm -hmm. That's what it's giving. That was the real purpose. The birthday excuse was smooth, but nobody actually spent their birthday in Cabo, Mexico. Hmm, why is that? That's real strange. Yeah, it was smooth. It was a smooth alibi, but then nobody spent their birthday there. Answer that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They most likely have done this before. People, listen to me. Because they was making professional criminal moves. They was passing that smooth alibi of a birthday trip. Then they passed a smooth alibi of alcohol poison. Then they said, oh, we need a car to go to dinner. And then they snuck out of Mexico. Then they tried to get $5,000 from Shanquilla mother. Then they box Shanquilla in the room for an attack and a deletion. Set up perimeter, block exits to make sure she got that work and that attack and that deletion. And they plan the attack around Dejanay and Nizia's birthday for the perfect excuse of why they went to Mexico. It's called, family, the birthday alibi lie. Mm hmm. That's what it's called, family. It's called the birthday lie alibi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then, Nazir, you had nerve to tell everybody on the video that if I was there, they wouldn't have did that to Quilla. Now, nah, that, 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 that. First of all, you was there, okay? I'm tired of you talk, lying and telling us that. But anyway, that's what I don't like about long-faced liars like Nazir. Who was most likely raised in a barn raising chipmunks and monkeys and think we stupid. Uh-uh. We ain't stupid, home boy. You're gonna tell us that if you was there, they weren't gone. They wouldn't have did that. Now Isaiah, stop lying, okay? Because it's clearly we're supposed to believe that the Cowboy Six is scared of the Cowboy Five is scared of you. When you are the one who fell in line to cover up the crime and then you participated in the crime, you didn't get Shanquilla no medical hospital attention. You refused her hospital care. You helped drag Shanquilla unresponsive. Remember, that's what you said, Nazia. Unresponsive. You helped drag Shanquilla unresponsive body from room to room and you helped cover up the deletion and you fled Mexico and you haven't talked to the family. You haven't talked to the mother. You haven't talk to anybody you left Shanquilla in Mexico deceased but we supposed to believe that the Cowboy Five is scared of you if I was there see they wouldn't have done that boy bye you fell right in line like a true flunky yes you did but ain't nobody scared of you and you know it the only thing the Cowboy Five is scared of you about is you keep running on the internet telling and confessing what happened Oh, that's the only thing they scared of. They want you to keep your mouth closed. Mm-hmm. So anyway, family, the Cowboy Six need false imprisonment charges. They need the Class 8 felony charges. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it won't be long. It probably going to hit them. Uh-huh. And they also did the White House press conference and all that stuff. They're on May 19th, Cowboy Six. It's, I'm telling you, y'all bumper. I can see y'all tag about to expire. Uh-huh. So, family, we going to go through all this. And our live coming up Sunday, please join us for our live. Don't forget, our live is May 20th, this Sunday at 6 p.m. Everybody, 6 p.m. Central Time. Everybody can call in if you can get through the line. But we are going to take a lot, a lot of calls. And we're going to discuss the Shanquilla and the Cowboy Six discussion. That's all I have to say about that. Justice for Shanquilla. i see y'all May 28th, Sunday. Live, taking live phone calls, and we're going to discuss, have deep discussion. It's going to be very interesting. Very interesting. Okay? Justice for Shanquilla. 
gain knowledge to prevent blockage. And we all know what that means. The more you know, the harder it is for anybody to block you out from your goals and success. Bye-bye.